in what is probably true NaNoWriMo fashion today, I'm going to be trying out a little thing called Campfire Blaze. Hello everyone, it's me Sarah, welcome back to my channel. Now for those of you who don't know what Campfire Blaze is, it is part of the Campfire technology family. Now you've got Campfire Pro and now you have Campfire Blaze. It is an online storytelling tool where you can add all of your character information, all of your settings, create the timeline for your story, add in all of your world building, sort of like a series bible, I guess, but online. I've always been interested in trying out Campfire and, you know, whichever related technology it is. I'm not a very big planning all my stuff online, sticking it in one place sort of person. I don't tend to do that, so <laughs> it's going to be very, very fun to sort of see what it's about, see how it works, see if I like it. It is free to use with limitations, of course. If you want full access to any of the modules, so you've got characters as a module, plot is a module, world building is a module, uh, you've got a basic version of them for free and then you can pay per month for each module that you want. If you want more access to the world building tools, you just need to pay per month for world building. I don't think it's very much either. Even if you cancel your payment, you'll still be able to view everything that you've done in that module. You just then won't be able to add to it. So that spoke to me as someone who can't quite like afford, say, Campfire Pro. But having everything basically free and then individual pricing for anything extra I want to go into detail for and not maintain that price if I can't afford it or if I don't need to use it anymore and still keep my work, like, yes. Yes, let's give it a go. <laughs> so I've signed up to Campfire Blaze. What I thought I'd do today was go through it in a little bit more detail, try some things out, add some things on to my projects, see how easy it is to use see what I can access at this free level and see if I like using it and see if it will be helpful to me because I know, it's, I know it's helpful to a lot of people. I know a lot of people like rely on campfire for their stuff. I've just never been one of those people, but we'll see if, if it'll work this time for me. Hmm. Let's, let's grab some tea because I haven't had tea this morning. It's terrible. And let's get looking. Okay, now that I have my tea, we can get started. But um, right. So this is this is Campfire Blaze. At least this is this is the home page, I guess, where you, it shows you all of your projects that you can access on it. As you can see, I have already created a project for Project Theft, which is what I am currently writing for Nanarimo. <sighs> Very slowly, unfortunately. So you can link projects together, which is great. You can have collaborators on it, which is fun. I really should add a little picture here you can use for a front cover. I don't have that yet, so I'm not going to. And then here is like, you know, that, that's, that's what the story is about, I guess. <laughs> I don't know word, it's so early and I'm very tired. So if we go into Project Theft now, you can see the dashboard that we have got. And I love the background. It's very, very pretty. It's a very, very pretty background. It takes so long to load. I don't know whether that's my internet or whether that's Campfire Blaze itself. Uh, it's not a massive issue, obviously. <laughs> it's just something I notice when things take time because I always think it's my internet. So here is the dashboard, as it were, for Campfire Blaze. So anything that you've done recently is here. You've got indexes down at the bottom with everything that you have put into the different modules and things like that. Up here, I'm guessing again, is a picture. I don't know what of. I'll fix that eventually. So at the top here, we've got different sections. We've got character in which you can add the characters in your novel and then you can add the relationships that those characters share with each other. You've got the plot, so you've got timeline, and you've got the arcs within your plot. Then you've got world, which is world building, locations, encyclopedia, magic systems. I don't know which of these I can access at the moment. We'll find out as we go along. And then to, you can write your manuscript. Not that I will ever write my manuscript in Campfire Blaze, because I use Scrivener for that, but for everything else, 
I can take notes and stuff, I suppose, in there. We'll see. So we'll go to character first. I've already added all of my characters, as you can see here. Uh, none of them have surnames. I started filling it out and I was like, oh man, now I have to find surnames for everybody. Like, that sucks. I don't like doing that. So I came up with Bailey for Lane because I like the way Lane Bailey sounds. Uh, it's not so well for her brother Cole because then his, he's Cole Bailey, which doesn't sound right at all whatsoever. I suppose if you add like a middle name or something like Cole Andrew Bailey, that sounds a little better. But again, I don't do surnames. I don't think surnames come up once in the books. So everyone else has just not got one. That's not even all of the characters either. I really should add Cole. There we go. So we'll come out of Cole, we'll go into Lane because we're going to do Lane today. Lane is our main protagonist out of the five POVs we have in Project Theft. So you can add her basic info and image, physical attributes, personality traits and her statistics. I don't know what statistics is supposed to be. I don't know what they mean by st statistics. I really don't. And then at the bottom here, you can add a backstory, which I don't do. There you go. So let's, let's. We're gonna, oh, how lovely. Pinterest immediately gave me Project Theft. This is my Pinterest board for Project Theft at the moment. It's really just character inspiration for everybody. Like there's no, there's no real aesthetic or anything except for the characters so this is lane this is lane's page and this here is lane i don't actually know the name of the face claim i could look it up very very easily and i have in the past i can't remember it off the top of my head but this is our main character this is lane so what i want to do is if i download that image and if i come back to campfire blaze i can add her image oh there we go And then we have a lovely image of what Lane looks like. Beautiful. So let's go through and and fill this out. And yeah, we'll start there. <laughs> we'll always start there. Okay, I actually have all of my characters' personality traits for Project Theft somewhere. Um, where that somewhere is currently, I actually have absolutely no idea where it is, uh, which is bad. If I want to fill this out, I want to fill it out with the information that I already have, rather than me making it up as I go along. I have so much crap in my drawers, it's absolutely ridiculous. Okay, so we have filled out Lane's profile as much as I can uh, without finding the personality traits that I've already selected for her and bothered to think of more. Without understanding what statistics is supposed to mean in regards to the character and what the name is and what the unit is. And I just don't, I don't understand what it's supposed to be. So I'm not going to fill it in. The thing I liked the most about this was the basic info it was so helpful to pick the basic info for her because you can manage the attributes and you can go through and you can highlight the attributes that you want to mention in regards to this character and then obviously if I add all of these in I actually had to take the big five personality traits test <laughs> <laughs> to see to see what the answer was but then if I add all of these on as a slider I can slide where they were so I can see more clearly in regards to her what they were which is good which is fantastic so that gives a lot of great information that things I wouldn't necessarily bother writing about my characters the physical attribute is, is, is pointless. Is it pointless? Because there's a picture of her right there. Technically, that is what she looks like. She doesn't really have any more physical attributes. Personality traits, again, 
I wish they'd have some sort of, um, you know, managing traits like they do with the attributes and then you can add your own if you want to, which I think would be helpful. And then I, again, I don't know what statistics mean. So we can, we can, we can do some backstory. That's her backstory done and dusted. So if I go back now to overview, so I can I delete things? I can delete panels if I don't want them. So let's delete statistics because I don't know what it is. What I can do instead though, is I can add panels as well, which is good. Table, list, text, stats panel, image panel, and a links panels. So if I wanted any extra information that is perhaps not covered in these four places, then I can add another panel if I want to. Which is, which is good, which is fun. So that is the character page. Let's go to relationships now. Where I can choose or create a relationship web. Oh, I've always wanted to do this. Let me go and add. Oh, okay, how do I do this? Use the button below to add some panels. Okay. Oh my God. Right, okay, let's do this. Let's do this now. Uh, lane, choose. Okay. Now, how do I go about this? Um, um, okay, let's pick red. Okay. But why? Oh, this is going to take some doing, isn't it? Okay. Okay. Okay, so Lane, and we'll add Cole. Okay, so can I move? Ah, if I click. <laughs> oh my God. If I move that there, okay. And then if I move Lane, let's put Lane in the middle. So if I, if I, Lane can link to Cole. Did that work? Okay. Um, family, right? Okay, and then add another colour for friendship is green. Okay, so then I can add Matthew. Okay, and then choose friends with Matthew. Right, okay. And then if I add uh, Kate, let's just add all the characters on and then do this. That's just literally it. There we go. That's my web. That's very pathetically sad looking, actually. I find it pointless because I've got a thread of friendship from Matthew to Cambry. I find it pointless to then do one from Cambry to Matthew. Like they're friends. That's that's all I need to do with it, sort of thing. It's a very sad looking relationship web. It really is. But that at the beginning, that is Matthew, Cambry, Baron, Avani are all friends. They're all in the group of criminals. Lane, <laughs> Lane is friends with Matthew, acquaintances with everyone else. Oh, let's put that acquaintance back, shall we? And then obviously Cole's her brother. I suppose Matthew and Cole would be friends. I suppose we can do that. That's my relationship web. My very, very sad relationship web. Right, we are done characters. Let us move on to plot. Now we can do a timeline. And we can do arcs. I'm going to look into arcs first and see what this is about. Is this character arcs or is this story arcs? Oh, don't. Oh. Nothing is explained. It's really depressing me. Okay, so we've got characters. Oh, okay. I can't add anything. Oh, okay. No, characters is open. Okay, tag this character in a timeline event to get started with arcs. 
okay so timeline first okay here you can map out the events that take place in your story to start you want to define your time units and set the limits of your timeline you can change these later in free form mode you don't have to worry about time units at all just add events to the timeline and move them wherever you like okay right so we're going to start not 1970 it's a bit too early none of the characters were born yet do i even want to know when it's set i just set it in 2019 in october the 10th i don't know when the end time is going to be how long is this but how long is the timeline for this see this would help if i knew the answers to these questions about how long why can't i go to why wouldn't you let me go to 2019 Okay, we're going to stop with the timeline now because <laughs> it's very difficult to do the timeline when I don't have my outline and when I don't have, you know, my work up in order to do the timeline properly. So what I'm going to do, instead of doing different plots, I'm going to do different characters and their POVs. And then the street is the background subplot that all of them are sort of accidentally solving. So the main plot is going to be Lane's plot which is finding her brother and then each other plot is going to be a different character with a different pov because they are all at different places at different times doing different things for the plot so this is actually a lot more difficult to work with than i assumed it would be because because i'm doing it free form obviously nothing has a time so what i'm doing is each little block here is going to be a different day so you can see on each day what is going on with each character that has been introduced at the time i don't need to know what avani and baron were doing at the very beginning of the novel because it's not important to the plot and then each new day that appears these are all of the events that happen with the different povs at the same time some of these we do see, like Avani having a meeting at her house, and some of them we don't see, which is Cole being kidnapped. And then I'm just going to go along and do it like that, but I'll need my outline with me, and I need a proper timeline set up for it. So if I go to arcs, I go to characters. I'm not going to be able to get into it again, am I? I go to lane. And if I, t oh, how do I tag in an event then? How do I tag a character in an event then? The, the problem is this doesn't tell you how to do things. So I don't know how to tag her in a timeline event in order for me to sort this arc out. It doesn't tell you how to tag them in a timeline event. Okay, that's a shame uh, that I don't know how to do that. But anyway, let's move on to world building very quickly and give this a go. So what can I do? So I can add a location with the same 
with the same image statistics, which I don't know what is, so I'm going to delete that panel completely. Links, an overview of the location itself and some basic information. Okay. Encyclopedia. What am I going to need to do with an encyclopedia? Research notes, maybe, of what I'm doing. Oh. Magic system. Okay. And again, we can add the magic system. The magic system is... I'm just going to call it magic because there's no like name for the magic system. It's just magic. Okay, so with this, we can add the source of the magic, the cost of the magic, an image of the magic. I don't know how everything is channeled, limitations, and then exceptions to the magic, as in when it can't be used, which is good. That's interesting to do. And then we can go over here to history, how it came to exist, a magical timeline, okay? And how rare is the magic in your world? Okay, so we're heading into series Bible entrance here. Systems. What systems? What systems? Okay, so as you can see, there's, there's some things I don't know what they are. But you can add things about cultures, philosophies, maps. Can I create a map? Not that I need to create a map, obviously. You can add an image of a map. Okay. Languages that they have, items that they have, species and religions that they have all in the world building as well. And then to write the manuscript. Okay. Can I just write? It's just li literally writing the manuscript. Okay. That is Campfire Blaze. Minus the frustrating lack of explanations of how to do certain things like tagging characters in timeline events for a free version of the program it's actually got a lot of things in it that you can do and then with the ability to pay for only the things that you need extra it's actually really really good and it's actually really really helpful i don't see myself using it that much i'm going to be completely honest the timeline is a bit fiddly it's a bit finicky the dates don't work on it properly, for me at least. I don't know if I was doing anything wrong, obviously, but for someone whose book doesn't last for more than a month, three weeks at best, not being able to have a time timeline set for just three weeks was quite frustrating. But having an overall view of what every single character is doing at a specific point in time, knowing visually which POVs and which events are happening simultaneously, that is going to be very, very helpful. So I'm going to keep trying to do the timeline, definitely. World building for Project Theft, at least, I don't particularly need to use it. Most of it I don't need to world build, really. For any other projects I have, and for the amount of things that you can actually world build in the free version, which is basically everything up to a certain number of point, is, is really good. It covers a lot of bases. But you can also import your projects you currently have from Campfire Pro to Campfire Blaze as well, which I find a very cool, fun addition, especially for those who have Campfire Pro. I don't know how different Campfire Blaze is from Campfire Pro, to be honest with you. I feel like Campfire Pro is Campfire Blaze, but you have to pay for it, basically. That's what I, that's what I feel like it is. Honestly, don't know. If anyone knows the actual difference between Campfire Blaze and Campfire Pro, please let me know. It's not quite what I thought. Not as easy to do as I assumed it would be, especially the timeline. But can't deny that it is a handy little thing to have. And despite me saying that I would like to continue with the timeline and continue with the characters, whether or not I actually have the motivation and drive to do so, I have absolutely no idea. But I suppose I'll keep you updated on that. Let me know down in the comments below, have you ever tried out Campfire Blaze or Campfire Pro? Are there any other online tools that you use to help you create your stories? Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Good thoughts and happy writing.